Shall we begin? Let's begin now. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. Sorry folks, I'm uh I'm at uh Peppercoom Bay. Um just sat in my tent and about to um Review um, a uh, Beyond the Beaten Tracks ready meal, um, easy outdoor food, all day breakfast. I've had this. I have actually had this before. Um, and if you want to pause it and read all that on the back, because I can't bother to read it. And there's the weight details there um, this is the outer packing so let's I'll get this open and show you what's inside the outer packing okay this is what's inside the um, outer packing now you can I think and there's information there and there as well if you want to pause it I think you can um, if I remember rightly last time I had one of these you can boil it in water uh, to warm it up so you don't get your pan dirty but um, beans is um, there's a lack of water this summer because the lack of rain and it's been so hot um, in the UK I'm going to um, eat it cold uh, you can eat it cold I would have rather warmed it up but I want to save my water for drinking so I'm still on I'm on a bit of a hike around the coast um, so uh, yeah, let's uh, open it up. Okay. Okay, so I've opened it up, ready to eat. As you can see, it's an all-day breakfast, a bit like you're getting um, the canned food, but in um, a packet like this. So you'd place this in boiling water and boil it up before opening it up. Uh, and then you can open it and it's nice and warm, but like I said, yeah, I'm just gonna eat it cold. Um, I can tell you, because I've had these before, um, I love them. I, I, lo I love this. It's one of my favourites. Um, I do recommend it. Um, I got these uh, cheap off eBay. I got a ten um, ten pound off voucher on eBay, so I got free for like two quid because of the ten pound off voucher. And all the the money to the people who who sold it me um, went to a charity as well. So hundred percent of it. So that's really good. Um, yeah, I'll put up on the screen. Um, who I got it from. Well, as I said, um, that was very nice. Definitely recommend recommend this. Uh, it's the retail normal retail price seems to be three ninety nine, but sometimes you can get them um, discounted when they're they're aspiring, so you can get some um, much cheaper if they've passed the aspire date or just about to aspire, or sometimes you get some money off vouchers on eBay so yeah it's quite expensive if you don't do that but all the money from this for the buyer I bought to went to um, a charity so 
yeah, it's really good. So, uh, just making some coffee and um, I'm using a normal gas hiking gas tin today because I had a few that I got free from when I visited Rum. I picked them up and thought, well, it's free gas, isn't it? So, drunk all my uh, Jura last night. Not a whole bottle, but you know, in the past I used to drink whole bottles, stupidly. Um, but uh, yeah, so I finished that off. Uh, so I've got you don't really get a hangover with that, as long as you don't drink too much, obviously. But uh, not the best Jura. Jura Jern is quite cheap, and it's it's definitely not the best one, but it's it's okay. It's a good. If you're on a budget, it's a bit cheaper usually than the the other jurors.
There's my tent over there. Okay, folks, well, I'm reviewing this uh, Beyond the Beaten Track ready meal. Easy outdoor food, beef, bolognese, and pasta shells. This is the uh, outer packing. And on the back, you've got some information there. You can pause it if you want to read it. Um, the details of it. Okay, let's, uh, let's open the packing up to see the inner packing. Okay, folks, so this is the inner packing. There's the information on there, if you want to read it. And you just rip this open, open it. Um, so yeah, let's open it up. That's it opened up. I'm not going to heat it up. Um, as with the other one, you can uh, put it in boiling water in your pot and make it warm so you don't get the pot dirty, I believe. But as I've said before, there's a lack of water about at the moment, so I'm going to eat it cold. You can eat it cold as well. I'll let you know how it tastes. Okay folks, so yeah, that that was really tasty. In fact, I think this was more tasty than the um, the all day breakfast um, I had. Um, very nice this was. Definitely recommend this. Okay folks, well, we're just gonna um, test this out, um, review this. It's uh, beyond the beaten tracks, ready to eat meal, easy outdoor food, chocolate pudding and chocolate sauce, which sounds really nice, I think I've had it before, um, and there's information on the back, sorry about the light, it's a bit um, shiny, um, and I'm going to open up the packing so to show you what's inside. Okay folks, well this is the inner packing, um, and I've just got a open that up here so folks that is the uh, content so I'm going to test it out and uh, let you know how it tastes well, that was a really tasty meal yeah I'd definitely recommend that nice uh, chocolate pudding there well folks it's been raining for a couple of hours and there's a great big puddle of water at the bottom of my uh, tent it's a uh, Van Gogh helium helium tent and I mean it is a great big puddle of water and the bottom of my sleeping bag is just totally soaked look there's fucking water everywhere I'm, I'm guessing it's because the outer and inner are touching it's the slightest bit of wind these these uh, seem to um, touch together and that's that's why it's just leak. It's just a great big pile of water, man. It's like it's like as if I've, I've tipped loads of water out in the tent. That's just from the rain. That is terrible. Um, I try and adjust the tent. Well, I did try and adjust the tent, but it's still touching. It's still the wind. <sighs> I'm impressed. Okay folks, so apparently there's a castle, um, <coughs> if you carry along the coast path down here, at Pepecoom, um, 
that's the coast path going along there, but I'm going to go up to the road because I need to get to the shops to uh, resupply. And here's a shelter which only seems to be um, open in the day, in summer anyway. Peppercoom Coach House, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints, feel free to rest a while here. Yeah. It's a shame it'd be a good place to sleep in the storm. There you go folks, left my details there. Apparently you can leave your name on here in the um, old coach house um, shelter. Okay folks, well, even the coach house shelter now. And uh, Valley to the road, the A road, then walking over to Box Mills where hopefully there's a post office that's open where I can resupply some water, drinkable water, and uh, go back down the coast path and walk to Black Church Rock or Church Rock, I'm not sure what it's called. Okay, there's quite a few bins at Pepperkin Bay, so I'm uh, put more rubbish in here. Okay, so that's okay. So that's my rubbish in there. I just got to go up through there to the main road. Okay, laundry only. Hmm. Wait. Fuck's sake! was actually at the A road, I was walking along that, so I thought I'd just go to the shop from the A road, but it was just too busy. So, I come up from the coast path, and I've got to walk back up the coast path, and then after the shop, if it's open hopefully, back down the coast path. Okay folks, I've never been up here before, this is Bugs Mills uh, Church, it's quite nice actually. Um, it's further up from the coast path, so a lot of coast walkers obviously miss this bit out. Quite a nice old church, very small uh, burial ground. Yeah. So there's steps that go up here. So again, this is the... Uh, it's a little, I don't know what that is, memorial. Okay folks, this is one of the many shelters around the coast of Great Britain. This bit is on the way from uh, the coast path just after Corelli, going towards Black Church Rock. Um, it would be a fantastic view if it wasn't for the trees, but I'm glad they don't cut those down just for our viewing pleasure because it's all part of the nature. Check out this uh, shelter folks. How cool is that? It's quite old, maybe over a hundred years old, I think, possibly. Got loads of old graffiti on it. I've seen it before, obviously, I've walked around this, all of this coast before, the whole of the southwest coast path. 
So yeah, I have seen this before. I think it's called Angel Wings Shelter or something or other. I think it's dedicated to somebody who died. There's a plaque here. I don't know if you can see that, there's the, the light shining on the way. Yeah, pause that if you want to read it. Okay folks, I don't, okay folks, I don't know if you can see it, but that's a uh, black church rock down there. Okay folks, <clears throat> considering people are pretty stupid, um, it says coast path and it's pointing straight out there, and straight out there is a sheer drop. So, I don't know, I know where it's supposed to mean, that is supposed to mean up there. But it should be pointing up there, but it's not. It's pointing straight over there. But it's sort of like it could be a path. Someone comes up here in the dark, and they fall to their death straight down there. So yeah, need to change that sign. Okay, folks. Well, this is a summer house, privately owned, I believe. Well, it must be, because every time I've been here, I think it's been unlocked once. That has been a time I think the first time I came here, it was unlocked. I think the building's changed slightly as well since I first was here. Been here quite many times, and um, the last time, or the last few times, it's, it was locked. It looks like it probably is now. And make a nice boffy. Oh, I don't see why it wouldn't be open. It's got some information in there, I'm guessing, for visitors. And there's a view from it. I would take off the drone from here, but... Yeah, folks, unfortunately it's uh, locked. I tried through the door just there and it's locked. There's a plaque up here telling you about what it is. I forgot, I think it's a summer house. So uh, if you want to pause that and read it, what it's all about. So yeah, I'm going to make my way down to the uh, Pyramid Rock. Hopefully there's somewhere down there to camp, I'm pretty sure there is. It's beautiful along here. And down there is just the, uh, I don't know, summer house. It's got, a, it's got a cross on it. It was for somebody's, was it, 18th or 19th birthday. 1932, would they still be alive? Probably not. Okay folks, well this is uh, Pike Church Rock Mills. Oh, I've still got the same graffiti in there, nothing's changed. 
This graffiti's been in there for years. Uh, along with some newer graffiti by the looks of it. It's a cheap, cheap, probably the cheapest drawer of whiskey. Not the nicest, but um, for a cheap whiskey, it's, it's really nice. Um, you could pick this up easily for 14 quid or even cheaper. And I've got one of those fire logs because on this beach there's a lack of uh, wood. So, let's pretend. Yeah, I can't 
camps at um, I like the church rug. They used to be the old mills on camps where. You know folks, I've been world camping now for years and years in England, Scotland, Wales and some other did some other I've done some other Commonwealth countries I've world camped in because I feel quite fairly safe doing world camping in the um, with a similar sort of culture to ours um, and just the same language because obviously if you get into any trouble yeah, and you speak the same language it's a lot easier um, world camping in England especially in, well, obviously Scotland it, a lot of it's allowed like if you're out in the way in the highlands but in England technically speaking mostly it's not allowed but is it against the law? That's another matter. Um, you in Dartmoor, you are officially allowed to wild camp in certain areas, but not all of Dartmoor. There are certain areas where you're allowed to wild camp, and even on the coast path, even though it's not officially allowed, uh, some of the estate uh, owners seem to not mind it. They tolerate it. Songs like "You're Not Having a Party" or trashing the place which obviously you don't want to trash the place but um, yeah I'm going to um, I, I think I'm going to do a video about um, world camping in um, England and in the UK in general but mostly England because obviously um, a lot of people think it's against the law well I don't actually think of, it's not really against the law to world camp in England it's just um, it's a rule it's not a law if you know what I mean Check that out ladies and gentlemen, the fire's going quite nice at the moment. My tent is over there, I don't know if you can see it, probably not. There's a wee fire next to the old kiln. The sea is behind me. Yeah, I threw a stone at the fire log because I was getting a bit bored with it. It was just burning really slowly and I just smashed it to pieces and now it's going up in flames nicely. Well folks, there's my Helium F10 Van Gogh tent, just had some uh, Jura. By the way, I'm going to update my review of the uh, Van Gogh Helium F10 tent. Um, in fact, I've been putting it up, maybe not quite right. Um, I found a way to uh, tight fasten the, the guides and um, it actually handles the wind not too bad. I wouldn't say it would handle it can handle up to 30 mile per hour winds okay I would say but after that then yeah I still still say after 30 miles per hour maybe not so good but in 30 miles per hour wind it should be okay um, but last night um, I, my sleeping bag got soaked but that's because I didn't do the uh, fast in the um, these things here right here these things tighten up and if you tighten these things up when it's windy it seems to uh, do the trick and when it was windy earlier on and I put this up and I tightened these up the inner and outer sheet wasn't touching so if I had that done last night my sleeping bag wouldn't have got wet in, in the rain so um, yeah it should be okay in 30 mile per hour winds with rain but just, you just got. Um, I'm going to do a demonstration of that, but yeah, I'll update my review of the um, F10 because I do like it now a lot more than I did before. So um, I definitely, definitely update that. So, folks, excuse me. This is a fantastic wild camping spot. I camped in last night at uh, Black Church Rock and these are the remains. There's a kiln there, back there, and I guess these buildings have something to do with that as well. They're all in, they're just all ruined now. It does look like there's a, someone's house a little bit further up or some kind of croft, but these, these buildings here they're all uh, out of use now. So 
So um, we'll take a look inside that building. Um, they've got a new bridge going over here actually. Yeah, I definitely, definitely recommend world camping down here. I showed you in there yesterday. I would, you wouldn't want to sleep in there unless it's like some kind of emergency or something. That's totally ruined whatever it was, some kind of uh, garage barn. And here you got uh, your kiln, which you do see quite a lot of around the coast. There's a few of those around Devon. But this is probably one of the better ones, I think. It probably is the, be the best one. This is one of the most um, remote beaches in uh, in Devon or even the um, southwest of England. That could be Peppercombe Bay that's the most remote, I'm not sure, but it's along from there, the, these, those two beaches, Peppercombe Bay and um, This beach here is probably the most uh, remote. Sorry folks, I forgot to say, um, here at Black Church Rock, uh, just over there is Lundy. You probably can't see it on the GoPro, but I can see it clearly. Uh, Lundy Island is probably one of the best places to see it from. And uh, over there, I think that's Heartland Point. And then we've got the, uh, the mills over there. Or the uh, kiln. Okay folks. This is a Crivelli um, church, uh, cemetery, statue there. Beautiful. Never, I don't think I've actually ever been here. Folks, I think it's Jesus. Looks like him. Well, maybe a shepherd. I don't know. But this is the, uh, the grave of whoever it was. Well, folks, I've never been here before, but this is the lovely, magnificent Corelli Gardens. <laughs> Looks more like a um, slum to me with all that rubbish. I'm only joking. It's like someone's forgot to pick it up. It is lovely actually. The church is nice. That's the entrance to the um, estate with the gardens and the church. Hey folks, that's, that's interesting about the church there. So if you want to read that, uh, pause it. Okay folks, just walking up here towards the wall, the um, the waterfall. It's supposed to be the most spiritual place in Britain where I'm walking to. This is not it, but it's on the way. 
Oh, cool. It's a um, Christian worm. Okay, folks. Well, this is Parsons House at Pyrrhon Church. This is on the way. This church does not look very old, I have to say. It definitely doesn't look old at all. Well, folks, this is the church. It's beautiful. This is a church on the way to the most um, spiritual place in Britain. It doesn't, I don't think it's a very old church. It looks old, but it's not old if you know what I mean. Okay. Well, we're carrying on our journey. Don't normally look in churches, but this one's quite unusual. <coughs> so it's another one of those places. I'm not sure if I've been to before, but it's a place I've always wanted to go to. I just can't remember if I've actually been to it. It's possible I have been to it, but I haven't got no real clear memory of it, so... Um, like I said, I've been to so many places, but it's supposed to be the most spiritual place in Britain. Uh, this uh, waterfall I'm just walking to in Cornwall now. Well, there's a quarry. Still in use over there, as you can see, right next to the most spiritual place in Britain, a quarry, and someone's building some new building over there. Um, yeah, good place to put a quarry in the most spiritual place in Britain. Oh my god, it's like new houses as well. There's like houses down here. Well, this is supposed to be the most spiritual place in Britain. What the fuck is this? It's like a pub garden. It's a bloody cafe. It's a shop. I'm guessing I'm going the right way. I'm guessing this is the way. I'm not impressed with this. What the fuck is this all about? It doesn't feel very spiritual with a bloody cafe right next to it. I was expecting it to be out of the way, this uh, place. I can't, guys, I cannot, I cannot believe this. I just walked up the hill to so see the waterfall. Not only do you have to pay to go and see it, there's like a, a missions thing, yeah? But it's closed. So even if I wanted to pay, I can't see it anyway. But on the on a good note, it looks like I may have found a free way in. Going across the, moving across the river. Up this way. So it looks like a free way to see it. Not fucking paying to see a waterfall. Taking the piss. Something nature's made. How the fuck do you pay for something nature's made? I can't believe that. It's supposed to be the most spiritual place in Britain, cashing in. Right folks, so I'm at the most spiritual place in Britain, my fucking arse am I? Keep out, private keep out, there's a fucking fence here. Like it's a bloody festival or something. And then you've got like a Buddhist thing there, all fenced in with this fucking private property keep out thing. And down there, I guess, is the um, is the waterfall that somebody thinks they can own. It was made by nature, 
which is supposed to be the most spiritual place in Britain. And it's all fenced off, keep out, and you've got to pay to go in. And if I, even if I wanted to pay to go in, it's closed. So I've just walked up here for nothing, so thanks a fucking lot. So folks, this is the uh, stream that goes down to the most spiritual place in Britain, apparently, which is um, only for selected people who can afford to get in, because you have to pay to get in, as I keep saying. Okay, so they've got this uh, sign here saying Danger Steep Slope. Um, and the price is to walk through the woodland and enjoy our calf and enter our beautiful site. To walk through the woodland and enjoy our, our calf and enter our beautiful site is free. However, charges apply for emissions to the waterfall. So you have to pay to see a waterfall. So I would have to pay five quid to see a waterfall. Five pounds, see a waterfall, which there are thousands and thousands around the country. It does look pretty impressive though. I think they got that steep slope thing there because they don't want people getting in free. It is steep though, but I could, it's not really steep for me. I think I'm going to go and take a look. Okay folks, I managed to get in. I would have actually paid if it was open, even though I don't really think it should be charged. I can understand they need to do the maintenance of the steps and everything else though. I guess the money goes to that. Well, that's beautiful. Oh my god, that is incredible. That is incredible. Oh my god, check that out. That's really cool. It's actually worth paying, it is quite a nice waterfall. And they um, I can see why they are charging because, because they uh, have to maintain the parks. But maybe not especially charge as much as they do, but um, it is nice and obviously they obviously upkeep it and they've added stuff to it like the spiritual stuff, so um, I kind of take a bit back what I said. But um, that's only because I just got in. I was a bit pissed off because I, couldn't, I thought I just walked up with a great big um, backpack up a pretty biggish hill only to find that it was shut and you have to pay and you can get in even if, I to, even if I wanted to pay. So that's the only reason I was in the mood. But now I'm here. It's really awesome. Really cool. So you've got these really cool spiritual sort of things. They leave at wishing wells in Cornwall and around the country and walk sacred places. It's definitely, it's definitely worth paying for, okay? It's a little bit on the expensive side for a waterfall, but it's definitely, uh, they've added stuff to it, you know? So I guess the waterfall's privately owned, but I don't, but I don't think things like this should be privately owned because it's a, a place in the public interest but you know people have got to earn a living so even if it is spirituality, I can't even say it. 
there's a waterfall again. Looks like there's something up here, but I ain't going to walk up here because actually I will walk up here. Hope I don't slip and break my back. So, there's something here. You want to read it, pause it. So here they put coins in the uh, seat, so when you sit down on it, you can get a bit of a surprise. Just like, I guess, like offerings. Coins have been left in the um, bench. There's never offerings there on the trees, I guess. That, maybe that's what people leave. I'm pretty sure it is. You see that out of the waterfalls spiritual places around Cornwall and around the country but particularly Cornwall I've noticed. Okay so let's have a look what's up here. Queen seat there. Bit of rock formation there, people have been stacking rocks. Oh my god look at this one. Wow. There's loads in here. Well wow, that is in pretty incredible that is pretty impressive. Check out all those coins in that wood. Wow. Sorry, I've not got my light with me to lift the bag up at the top of the path. Check this out, folks. Sorry about the no lighting as I've left my light up in my bag. The waffling there. Well folks, I'm just walking down towards the sea now to look at Valley on the uh, <laughs> along this uh, stream which is uh, coming from my spooky part of Britain. I've got thoughts on it. When I first got there, I was couldn't find it, then I saw a cap. This cap right looks fairly new. It looks nice enough. Um, but I have to say, I think it looks good a cap right next to a spiritual place on it. I mean, a cap next to the most spiritual place in Britain. And then um, I was walking along, and um, I saw the thing saying you've got to pay to see the wolf. I thought, what? I saw no other mention of this as I was walking up the hill. And of course it was closed when I got here. So I wasn't very happy, that's why I was going. So then I went to Amsterdam, I might be a free way around the back. And it was all fenced off so private, so obviously it wasn't going to go into that because it's private. Um, and then um, eventually I saw there was a path, this path you're allowed on my way, this is you're allowed to walk on this path, which should be anyway. Uh, so basically, so I believe it's a right way, so no one can stop me. I think it's a right way, right? But anyway, sort of point. Um, so uh, yeah. So after seeing the place, I eventually found this path, and by the sides of it was steep, sort of slight down to the waterway, you can go and see it for free. And the other morning sides of this, and that's to stop you can go and see it for free. Um, I don't know where these stone gardens are, probably past the paper. But anyway, um, we should have um, Yeah, so I eventually got to see it for free, so I'm happy now. Okay, folks, this is if you're coming the other way, going up to the waterfall that way. I'm going down that way. There's some information here you might want to read. Pause it if you want to read it. And then there's more information there. Uh, I don't know what that's about and what I've read already, I think. Okay, folks, this looks like some kind of cave. Don't know if this is where the um, rock art is. Oh, it just looks like where people do a poop. Lovely. Can't see any rock art there. So I've just uh, seen um, this sign. And it's got some more information here about the um, the waterfall. But it says about the uh, cafe there, and um, then you've got some information here as well. If you want to pause that and read it. Okay, folks. Well, I've got here a bit late. There is actually I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. Some kind of mill here. Hmm. It's quite interesting. So I'm going to have a look around here. Put my bag down. The, the ancient, supposedly ancient rock art is. I've wanted to see this for ages. Okay, I don't know if that's too bright. Maybe it's too bright. I just changed the bright. Okay, folks. This is the um, supposed um, ancient rock art and. Um, some people think it's thousands of years old, some people don't think it's so old. When it was only mentioned, I think, within the last hundred years. It's the first mention of this rock art. 
but some people seem to think it's thousands of years old. There's absolutely no proof. How can you date that rock art? There's a lot of information about it there, but it's, that's worn away. Funny enough, the sign that was probably put up in the 50s at the latest is actually worn away more than the actual ancient rock art. Mm -hmm. Ancient rock art. Mm. After thousands of years, all the weathering and stuff would, would have deteriorated. That I would have thought anyway. I'm not saying it would, it's just what I think anyway. But nevertheless, it's interesting to know what the um, story is behind it. So these are all like messages people have left behind. There's loads. got more kind of offering things in here. Wow this is cool. Look at that. Got things people have left on the walls. Like offerings. There's so many things people left behind. Probably should have got here in the day. Uh, I think you, uh, people leave messages to their loved ones who've passed away here as well, I think. So that's quite, quite sad to read for folks. Possibly not going now with this one. <laughs> that is that is a price worth seeing. Some more there. Folks are left behind. Okay folks. Wow, look at this. Wow, someone's left a message for someone here. It looks like it's worn away. That's quite old, leave it there. Yeah. Okay folks, I don't know what that is. I have no idea, but I think it might be some kind of Wiccan, Wiccan thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and some people have left messages to loved ones up there, for the looks of it. And here, all over really. There's another part of the building here, but it doesn't look like there's any really, any offerings in this, uh, Part of the building, apart from down here. Don't know what that is. Looks like some kind of fancy candle. Probably made out of a skull. That'll be my path down there in a minute. things down there by the looks of it. Go and have a look. In case you're wondering, this is called Tree Web Bet Mill. Where the um where the carvings are. Right, I'm gonna get my
Sorry folks, pause it if you want to read that, apparently. National Trail. Hmm. Right. My wee drink for tonight. So this is the wire chain uh, Tintagel. Not staying at it, I'm just having a look. I don't know if you can camp here. There's some seats outside. Anyway, I'm going to carry on to Tintagel. Okay folks, I've just spent a good two hours searching this graveyard for a relative in uh, Padstow. 
I've not found it to be honest, I can't find it, but I found uh, the seat I actually put my bag on in the first place has the same last name as um, a long past relative. Um, I don't know if there's any connection there, but it's not the one I'm looking for, but they have the same last name and I haven't seen this last name in the cemetery at all. This is the only place I've seen it on this bed memorial bench, so maybe they're their relatives, I don't know. But I've, I've looked all up there, all along here, all down there, no trace at all. Oh, I might come back sometime if I get some idea where it is, but yeah, it's funny that where I just sat, put my bag down while I was looking in the cemetery, the, the same last name is actually on a memorial bench I've put the bag on. type of deer they are. Interesting. Footpath closed, why is that then? Looks overgrown. I think maybe there's a good reason, maybe it's uh, become unstable. So folks, they got a uh, um Rest a while, tea garden, hot and cold drinks. Um, after Padso, Padso, I'm just walking along the uh, mouth of the river, whatever it's called, and um, that's just along there. So folks, it's actually a nice bit of the, the coast along here, apart from all the bloody houses they keep seem to want to build, and uh, the speedboats there. Actually looks good fun. People out there on their uh, speedboats are probably the very same people who tell us to live our lives more greenly. No doubt. Hey folks, well, walking back to Padstow now, took tent down, weather's been pretty misty and wet.
Okay folks, I'm doing um, an update and my review on um, the Helium F10 Van Gogh tent. Um, when I first bought it, I wasn't too keen on it because I thought it couldn't handle the wind very well, but now um, I've discovered a way of putting it up. Obviously you need to tighten the, um, these up here. You can tighten these, so when it's more windy, tighten that down so it stops flapping about. I mean, it's pretty obvious, really. Don't know why I missed it before. This is kind of just a more of an update to the review I've done already of this uh, tent. Um, so basically, yeah. So you just do those up and it tightens it up and it stops it flapping about so much. I mean, it still can't handle serious wind like a four season tent could, but this is a lightweight tent and it's not a four season tent. So really, now I've discovered this putting it up more properly than when I first got it. Um, I'm a lot more pleased with it. Um, so yeah, you got the um, air vents here. There's a little, there's a hole there, a little hole there. And you've got a peg there, a peg there, a peg there, a peg there, and a peg there. Um, just give you a quick look inside. This is just a recap on things really. Um, this is a uh, got a little hook, a little hook here where you can actually do the door up. But I won't bother doing that up at the moment. But it it hooks onto there, and um, that opens the door up. And then you've got the fly sheet, the inner sheet here. Um, these have um, I've been told by numerous, numerous occasions by uh, people that um, these are tension ropes. So you like, um, yeah, you do that to put more tension on. So that's another thing for the wind as well. So that's windy. You tighten these uh, ropes up. Uh, this is the inside. Um, got an air vent there. And an air vent down there. Um, and there's pockets up there in the corners. As you see. Um, the, well, I've had this for six months now. I started using it in um, towards the end of winter. I actually, started using it towards the end of winter. Um, so it's a good. It is a good temp. Um, at first, I thought maybe maximum thirty mile per hour gusts, but I reckon now I've done the uh, the ropes and the, I've put it up more correctly. I reckon it could probably do. 40 mile per hour gusts maximum, very maximum, but not wind. It wouldn't stand 40 mile per hour wind, I don't think. But gusts maybe. But it's it's much more sturdy and not so baggy inside. Uh, someone commented on my other review that it looked like um, a few, like a, I can't remember, like an inside of a coffin or something because it was all baggy white stuff. So yeah, that wasn't a, <laughs> it's probably not a great feeling, is it? Right, so uh, and do that up, do that up. So this is just a recap, really. That does that goes up. Okay, yep. So as I said, there's pegs there and a peg there, and again, you got the peg here, and you can tighten these up to when it's windy. And the air vent here, and the peg here, and the peg here. And the same again the other side really. Oh, I haven't put the peg in this side. But yeah, it's supposed to be a peg there unless I've lost it. Um, so yeah, that's just an update on the review I've already done. So, uh, and I will now say that I'd give this Fango tent five out of five because it's so light. It's just over a kilo in weight. I can sit up in it. I can lay down in it okay. No, I'm not a very tall person. So you want to check the measurements of the tent before you buy it. I'll put, put that up on the video. Um, it is a very good tent. Uh, folks, I'd like to say um, if you uh, click on the Amazon ads on my um, Four Season Backpacking webpage, um, I get a percentage of the sales, uh, most of the sales from that if you buy from Amazon through the any link just click on any link amazon link my um four season backpacking webpage 
and I, I should receive a percentage of um, the, um, the money. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but um, it helps me because I need a new backpack that's falling apart. That is the, um, the waist thing, it's totally broke. Um, the zips are not working very well, they're starting to fall apart. Um, could do with some new hiking trousers. Um, I need a new, I need um, a new uh, four season sleeping bag because I went and burnt a hole through my old one. Um, also need, oh, I need some new walking boots. I need some new winter walking boots. They've, they've had it. Um, I can't afford any of this. Um, and it'd be not if, if you want to buy some off Amazon, you'll be doing me a big favour because you'll be giving me a percentage of what you buy and um, like it, it doesn't cost you anything extra but I will make a percentage and that help me do this video channel and buy some new gear so I can do this because to be honest winter hiking is going to be very hard if I don't get some new gear I mean, next, like, you, know, you can't get your toes cold in, you know, if, if you're camping out a couple of days um, in minus temperatures because you're going to lose your toes so and my sleeping bag I need a new winter sleeping bag so that would be a great help guys so um yeah please use the amazon links on fourseasonbackpacking.co.uk um i've got the link on the video that would help me out a lot mate well folks i've been pondering whether to uh fly my drone it's that rock out there i've never really flown it over water maybe a small amount of water but not nothing like this so i can't really make my mind up can't afford to lose it. I've checked what settings for water you need, but uh, it's still. <laughs> if it falls out the sky, I've lost it forever, right? <laughs> So folks, I managed to uh, fly the Maverick right over to Gold Rock over there from where I'm camping, I'm just camping here still. I um, managed to fly it over there, maybe not the best footage ever because I was so nervous flying it because it's the first time I've really flown over a body of water. Um, and that, and it, I can tell you it was about 
almost yeah one over 120 meters away so over a kilometer away uh didn't have full battery power which you should do really i had a good amount in there though i was confident that i could do it um there's not too much wind at the moment um but yeah uh, the only problem was when i was uh when it was uh landing it just because I turned off the underneath sensors, it just dropped. When it reached a certain height, it just seemed to drop. Um, it didn't land very well. Uh, and just before I landed it, actually, my um, phone lost signal. Uh, the controller was still working, but the, the phone lost signal. So I was going to do another film going out over the sea of you and my tent, but... That's kind of put me off because obviously I don't want the thing buggering up where it's over the sea and then I'll lose it. So um, until I figure out what went wrong there, I think I probably should um, not do another sea shot. But I turned off all the sort of like underneath sensors. So I don't know if that was a correct thing to do. Maybe that's why I didn't land very well, but um, I don't know if there's an easy way to turn them all back on. When, when you want to land it. Uh, if you know, please let me know in the comments. Okay folks, well, um, I'm packed up, ready to go, got the tent down. And if you can remember to click on my Amazon links on fourseasonbackpacking.co.uk. If you're gonna um, buy anything for Amazon, if you click on my links on the page and buy what you want, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps me because I get a percentage of it but it costs you nothing extra at all, but I make some money from it. So everybody's happy. As you can tell, this is a favorite camping spot of mine. Uh, on this occasion, I've been stopped, I've stopped here three nights now, well, one, well, maybe two nights. I was gonna stop another night if I got a bit bored and I wanna to get to the shop in Tintagel before it closes. And I'm gonna come back down here and camp higher up a change so it gets a bit boring camping in the same spot well folks there's Tintagel YHA and there's a uh, Gull Rock just over there well well folks this is uh, this morning's view from the tent I'm camped in the same area as before but higher up on the hill uh, for a change but I have to say I love this part of the coast but it's a shame it's so busy because it's peak absolute peak season at the moment towards the end of August but uh, next month it'll be much quieting down a bit and still still warm enough to camp and sit outside the tent so I might come back down next month Now folks, I'm at Tintagel Church again, the one by the coast path, and it looks like there's some kind of Neolithic mound in the um, graveyard here, I could be wrong. There's an old cross. So I'm just 
in a hurry because otherwise I'll miss my uh, my bus to Bude and from Bude I don't know like, uh, whether to go back home or stay one more day I need to be back by Friday or Thursday I need to be back, no, by Friday I don't know whether to stay another day or but then it'll be an area I've been to already probably Peppercoon Bay I have a think about it on the bus to view but I don't have to go back today but if I do this might be the last this might be the end of the video Well, it's been good anyway. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If it is the end of the video, there might be extra yet. Okay, folks, there's uh, Britain's oldest post office. It's not a post office anymore, it's medieval apparently. But there is actually a post office in Scotland, which is the oldest still running post office, it's still open. This one, as I said, it's the oldest post office, but it's no longer a post office. But it's the oldest, I guess, building of a post office. Still got a post box there, not, not in use though. The post office now is right up that street there. So folks, uh, this is what it says, the old post office, a medieval hall house dating from around 1380. This building is a rare surviving example of a Cornish hall house. Over the centuries, it's had many uses. So basically, it's not just been a post office post. So I don't know. They can say it's the oldest post office when it's not a post office anymore, and it has actually been used for other things. So I don't know how they can claim it's the oldest post office because <coughs> it's had many uses. I could understand if it was just a post office. So they have a still have a red phone box in uh, Tim Tajul and it's still working and it actually takes coins bloody hell